What's up YouTube? Welcome to another video. So in this video I'm going to show you how to build a Formula One race car suspension system. This is for the rear of the vehicle so it doesn't have turning but it does have a drive shaft and that drive shaft connects through uh, a, a differential to the wheels. So that means that it will be set up to turn properly if you're going to build this into a vehicle with motors and the motor can correct, connect directly to the drive shaft or through a gearing system if you wanted to add that in. This is a really nice little bit of kit and I think it's going to be good fun to build it. But also at the end of the video show you how to replace the suspension or shock absorber system at the back with an elastic band system which is also really nice I think offers some unique benefits. So these are all of the parts that you're going to need to make this and I have all of these listed in the description below. I do normally put it on the screen, but there's just simply not enough room on the screen to show you all of these parts. So uh, check out the description if you wanna see what they are. So let's get started. Everything is gonna be built in and around this frame and um, that just gives it a nice bit of stability and strength. It's a decent sized frame as well. So if you're gonna build this into a much larger vehicle, which you probably are, uh, there is plenty of room to attach that to the vehicle. Obviously I'm building this in isolation. So uh, there are some components to this, which you know I'm kind of just building around uh, in order to, uh, to show you how it's done. But if you were actually putting this in a vehicle, you might do it slightly differently. But the, the core functions and mechanics should remain uh, pretty much the same. And also as well, I'm using uh, these, the wheels that I'm using in this video, you could replace obviously with uh, any of your own wheels. Uh, I just thought these were a nice size in terms of how they match with the scale of the vehicle or the scale of the suspension system. I hope you enjoy anyway. So I actually put these bits on in the wrong order. Uh, if you try and do it like this, you might end up uh, bending or breaking some of the components. So I just went ahead and uh, took these off and uh, redid them. When I come to do the other side, you'll see me do this in the correct order. So, uh, so it shouldn't make too much difference to the overall build, but um, it just clicks in a lot easier there. And then you can put the uh, axles through um, the uh, holes of this bit and then they go straight through the suspension lever there.
This is the differential that I'm going to be using in this build, but you could easily swap this out for pretty much any of the other standard LEGO differentials that they make if you were making this vehicle to be used on rough terrain or was going to be like a four wheeler or something like that um, then you might want to use one of the more heavy duty differentials but for the purpose of this build this is completely fine and all of the other differentials that lego produce as standard uh, pretty much can be connected in exactly the same way as long as they've got the angular gears on the side uh, to be driven by also as well i'm using these um, constant velocity arms to connect the differential output to the wheels and you could use a universal joint for this but I find that these constant velocity joints are just a little bit more sturdy and work a little bit more effectively and in this particular type of build as well uh, they're actually a little bit less uh, fiddly in order to connect and keep in place. Also here you could use one of the larger bushes instead of two smaller ones it makes absolutely no difference to the overall build uh, I just have more of the smaller ones in my kit so I'm going to use those these bits are the same on the bottom as they are the top and I'm just racing through this just to keep the video as short as possible This arm here that I'm putting on actually should be put on the other side or at least the other side once this is connected. So either put it on the other side or turn this upside down when you're building it. I do correct this later in the video. These bushes do have a tendency to pop off under a lot of strain. So I used ones that were particularly tight fitting. So if you've got pieces that are, you've used in multiple builds and they're starting to get a little bit loose, uh, maybe just use some newer ones or use the uh, bushes with the teeth on them, which I find grip a little bit better as well. This is quite fiddly and you actually need to take off the uh, constant velocity joint that connects to the differential in order to reconnect it, uh, the whole thing together into one piece. This is built in the exact same way as the previous one, so I'm just going to kind of race through this a little bit here. Basically two bushes on each side of the axle, or one of the large bushes depending on what you want to build. Again, this component here actually should go on the other side of that wheel joint there. As I say, I do correct this later in the video. And these are really, really fiddly, these, uh, these axles to connect here. So I actually just take it off and then kind of slide it back into place. So with this kind of undercarriage component here, the reason that I'm building it like this is just to provide some stability for the piece itself. If I was building this into a vehicle, I would do this differently as I'd probably be connecting this to the chassis of the vehicle. These bushes here actually just help to hold those yellow axles into place within the frame to stop it from moving around and again give the whole thing just a little bit more stability. If you were building this into a vehicle yourself you may want to do this slightly differently.
It was at this point that I realized that I'd put those uh, connecting arms onto the wrong side of the wheel unit there. So I've just taken those off and then put them back on the other side, so no big deal. So when you're connecting these components here, you just want to make sure that there's a right angle essentially between the half beam and the ball joint connector there. The top half of this kind of central frame here, actually I put this on a bit early, ideally you should wait until the end to put that on, but again if you're building this into an actual build you might want to do this differently because it may want to connect to the overall chassis itself. So when I'm taking this piece off here, I should have just left it off until I'd put on the final uh, shock absorbers, but I put it back on here and needed to take it off again in the future. So just leave this off essentially until the model is almost complete at the very end. Depending on what wheels you're using, you might not actually need to use these parts to connect the wheels. Uh, I found that the wheels that I'm using here were just slightly too small in diameter to be able to fit over the whole suspension unit, and so I needed them to be uh, stuck out a little bit further from that. It doesn't really make much difference, but yeah, it depends on what wheels you're using as to whether or not you'll need those components. So this is the gear that drives the differential and to be fair you could put this on either the front or the back of the frame, it just depends on how you want to integrate this into your overall build, it really doesn't make too much difference. But that is it, that's everything done and uh, this is what it looks like. So we've got one bush left over which we can get rid of and you can see that the differential drives the wheels there and those are free to turn independently. So this is really nice, I like the way that the uh, kit turns the motion from vertical uh, to uh, lateral uh, where the uh, shock absorbers are. Also worth noting is that the wheels do turn better when the suspension is flat. Uh, when, it's, when you build it like this it will be angled slightly uh, but that just gives you a little bit of flexibility so that when the rest of the car white can push it flat. Uh, when they're 
both the wheels are pushed against the table, you will get good traction on them. So in this section, I'm gonna show you how to uh, update the car or change uh, around so that you're using elastic bands rather than the shock absorbers. So first of all, we just gotta take off a whole lot of this stuff here, so I'll just race through this pretty quickly. Essentially, the advantage of the elastic bands is several fold really. Firstly, they are cheap, very, very cheap by comparison to the shock absorbers, which can be quite pricey. They cost up to five or six dollars, in fact, each. And also, uh, the elastic bands, depending on how many times you wrap them, uh, will determine like, how strong the suspension is. And so, um, again, you can adjust that much more easily on the fly without having to replace uh, different shock absorbers with soft or harder ones. Also as well, I just really like this. I quite like using elastic bands in my builds instead of shock absorbers. Um, again, they're a little bit less prone to breaking and um, I find just, just really interesting to use. And quite often I can actually get a better result with the elastic bands than I can with the shock absorbers. And sometimes I find with the shock absorbers as well that they kind of push in in the middle and don't necessarily go uh, in the linear motion that they're supposed to. So also when taking these things off here, you can see some of the bushes popping off at the end of the wheel uh, hubs there. So in this particular example, I'm just wrapping the elastic bands around my fingers three times before installing it onto the vehicle. Um, but again, you know, you could probably do that four or five times depending on the weight of the vehicle. And also the thickness of the elastic band. I mean, I went down to a local office store and just bought like several boxes of elastic bands for next to nothing. Um, they all come in different thicknesses and strengths and sizes so um, you can kind of adapt that to your build and uh, I find this gives you a little bit more versatility sometimes than the shock absorbers which also take up a lot more space but the end result I think is pretty similar um, you actually get um, pretty much the same thing happening and uh, the suspension works in, in exactly the same way except these are obviously pulling rather than pushing in terms of how they work but as you'll see here when you apply some force to the top of the uh, frame that moves really nicely and smoothly and in fact I would say almost better than what it does with the shock absorbers itself so uh, yeah uh, maybe try that with your build there's no bother to swap it out and see how you get on so there we go that's how this is built and that's how you use it with either the shock absorbers or with elastic bands either way I think it's a really nice little bit of suspension it's dead easy to make it doesn't use a huge amount of components uh, so it's relatively cost effective to build and as I say it's got the drive shaft there so that you can connect that to a chassis. Thanks for watching. If you like this video then chuck us a like and if you want to see more content like this then hit that subscribe button. If you've got any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see me build put that in the comment section below. Otherwise we'll see you next time.